you that are new. And as you come, every time you show up here, you're in 500 points. That's right. If you participate in class, you earn 500 more points. If you fall asleep, Bella, you don't get any. <laughs> Bella's never fall to, fallen asleep. No, Aria, no, actually, and I stayed awake. Aria is our sleeping champion. She missed out on points because she falls. If you guys stay awake and participate in class, because I was just playing music, and it's a lot of work. And so if you participate in class, that's 500 points. If you bring a Bible, and I want put your Bibles up if you brought a Bible. If you brought a Bible, Ella has a Bible. Bella has a Bible. That's a lot of Reagan has a Bible. And Matthias has a Bible. Is that it? Is that all the Bibles for? Every okay, you can put your Bibles down. Everybody who brought a Bible just earned another 500 points. Can you get 1,000? You can, you can get a lot of points. You get 500 for showing up. You get 500 more for participating in class. How much is that? Uh, 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 I asked Callie. 1,000? If you bring a Bible, you get 500 more. How much is that? Okay, she's our math whiz here. Did anybody, we do, we have offerings. Ella brought an offering. Another 500 points for Ella. Uh, Anaya brought an offering. Another 500 points for Anaya. Aria brought an offering. Another 500 points for Aria. Not bad. Uh, Reagan brought an offering. Another 500 points for Reagan. And is that it? Uh, Bella. Bella brought an offering. Another 500 points for Bella. Now, let me tell you this. I have some people already who are here. Raise your hand if you're not here. Uh, what? I'm not here. Raise your hand if you're not here. Oh, what? Hey. <laughs> what? Okay, look around. If you see anybody's hands up, those are our would-be comedians. Um, they wish they wish they were comedians. But you too! If 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 at any time you get three points, 500 for showing up, 500 for participating, 500 for bringing your Bible. So all those that brought their Bibles, if you participate in class today, you've already earned 1,500 points. And when we, we've got a cabinet over here that's got wonderful Bachel prizes. And at the end of the quarter, we open it up and you guys can go shopping for prizes. But if you have earned 1,500 points in any Sunday, you get a shot at the wheel of misfortune. We had somebody get that. Let me tell you something, if you get bankrupt, you're not going to lose all your points, I promise. If, so if you brought an offering, and I've got those that brought offerings, so I've got people here, I've got two pe three people already who have won themselves a spin at the end of the quarter of the magnificent Wheel of Misfortune. Who are they? I already named them off. I already named them right there. All right, now, let me ask you this. Did anybody bring a friend for the first time? Not your first time here because you're already getting 500 points for that. But did anybody bring a friend for the first time? Because if you bring a friend for the first time, you get a thousand points. Ooh. And guess how much you get if you bring an enemy? Uh, you still get a thousand. Really? But it shouldn't. It shouldn't matter whether they're friends or enemies. Bring them. Oh yeah, that's in the Bible. Invite. You're invite right. Your friends. It does. Anybody. That's right. All right. So without further ado, let's get going with the lesson this morning. Does anybody know what day today is? Easter. Easter. 
Go ahead and shout it out. Easter. 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 Which Easter. we also call what? Pop. No. What is the big word that we use to describe what happened today? Resurrection. Somebody's got it. Resurrection. Resurrection Day. Resurrection. And this is Resurrection Sunday. All right. Why do we call it Resurrection Sunday? Anybody have an idea why we call it Resurrection Sunday? Go ahead and shout it out. Because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Let me tell you this much. Let me tell you this much. Guys, whoa, time out, time out. All right. Rule. When I'm talking, you're not. All right. I love to have fun. But my number one concern here is getting the lesson across. And if I can't get the lesson across, then I'm not doing my job. So when I'm talking, you guys aren't. Give me one second. Off camera. Pardon me for that short commercial interruption. And let's go ahead and put some new people in here. Jordan. Did you bring a Bible today, Jordan? He's got his Bible. Awesome. And let's see. Jonathan. You have your Bible too? Awesome. Jonathan. See if I can spell his name right. All right, did you guys bring a friend for the first time? You brought your brother. He's no friend, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to put Jaden's name down anyway. Hey, Jaden. How you doing, buddy? You don't have to be shy. We're all friendly here. All right. It's okay, Jonathan. Just let him, let him be, Jonathan. All right. Um, were there any other offerings? No, those were the only ones. Okay, good. We got them all. All right, back to what Sunday is. This is Resurrection Sunday. Now, let me tell you here. This is how awesome God is. This is how awesome God is. Death can't beat God. Amen. Now, I'm going to get a little sensitive here. There are a lot of people in this room that know what death is. Okay? I just lost a cousin just this past week. My, my cousin died. He was 71 years old. And he's going to be with Jesus. So we'll miss him. But he's going to be with Jesus. Now, here's the thing, though. Death can't beat God. That's right. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't stay dead. Flash forward three days later, and he boom, up. here's Jesus again. That is what's called resurrection. That means you are dead, and you're no longer dead. All right, so I have got here what we call resurrection eggs. And I want to use these resurrection eggs to help teach the lesson this morning. <laughs> oh, these are jelly beans like you've never seen. Okay. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. The lesson in these resurrection eggs is sweeter than any candy. Oh, really? Absolutely. Sweeter to your soul, not 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 to your mouth. If I. If I take one of these here resurrection eggs and I bite into it, 
It don't taste too good because it's plastic, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I thought it was edible. No, these are not edible. Okay. You can open it. However, they will be sweet to your soul. Now, I'm going to ask for volunteers. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I got one, I got two, I got three, I got four, I got five, I got six, I got seven, I got eight, I got nine, I got ten. Is that it, ten? Can I get two more? Two more, two more, two more, two more. <laughs> no, don't, no volunteering people. No volunteering people. If you want to volunteer, put your hands up. If you want to volunteer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, we got twelve. Okay, twelve. Resurrection egg number one. Jonathan, come up here, bud. I want you to squeeze right there and open up this egg and tell me what's in it. You got to use two hands. Go ahead and open the egg. Tell me what's in it. Show it. Reach it up. Here, take it out of the eggshell. And reach it up for everybody to see. A donkey. Would you like to read a little bit? You're shy? All right. I got the donkey. I'm gonna put the, yeah, I'll take the egg too. I'll take the egg too. So, number one is a donkey. You put it back. That's a clue. No, nope, it's not a clue. What? It's a village. It's a story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, those of you that have your Bibles, do you know where Matthew would be? Let me give you a clue. Take your Bible and split it in half, and that's going to be probably about Psalms, and then take the second half, take the back half and split that in half. Okay, so let me, let me see if I can show you. Oh, I've been saying you. If you can't find the Bible, what'd you do with it? You had it. Did you put it over here? Oh, it fell over here. There you go, it fell down behind. Okay, so if you take your Bible like this and you split it in half, kind of like that, and then you take the, I've got it upside, no I don't got it upside down, then you take the back half and you split it in half again, and chances are pretty good if you're not in Matthew, you're going to be very close. Ella, what do you have? What, what book are you in? Do you know what book that, you know what it means what book you're in? Okay, right on the top of the page it's got a, it shows you a name. Oh, yeah. Are you in Matthew? Good. So when you find Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 21. The big numbers are going to be your chapters. If you right, need help, raise your hand and we'll be help you. Anybody needs help, raise your hand. Oh, I'm Matthew I'm chapter help. 21. Can we help you? Oh, we're good. Okay, let's turn out split in half here. Okay, so let's split in half and then we take the back half. You took the front half, yeah. and you're pretty close. Matthew comes before John. That's because we're going the wrong way. There you go, Matthew. Target. Want me to help you? Uh, Ready? Yeah. I'm going to split in half. So we're going to look for the big number. Right there. Oh. And then I'm going to split in half again. Right there. Okay, Mark comes yeah. right after Matthew. There's Matthew. So look for the big 21. So you're going to go back Target. until you find the big 21. Right. Did you find Reagan? Good, good. Ellie, you got yours, right? Awesome. So those of you who have Bibles, follow along. I'm starting in the first verse, right after where it says 21. It says here, Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into a village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Behold, say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on them, their cloaks, and sat on them. And he sat on them. 
Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now, those of you who were here last week, do you recognize that lesson? Do you recognize that lesson? What was that? Do you, do you recognize that lesson even though you weren't here? That was Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And all the people had heard that Jesus did some great mighty things. He had just raised a man from the dead. He had just raised a man named Lazarus from the dead. And everybody heard it, and they were, wow, he raised him from the dead. This guy, this must be the Messiah. This must be the king that we've been waiting for. Finally, somebody that's going to take the Romans and kick them out, because we don't like the Romans. Got one more here. And so they heard that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. And there was a big party. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Because they knew that Jesus was a descendant of King David. And they thought, this surely is going to be our king. However, number two. And I'm going to call on Arya to come here and open number two. You see what's in it. Pull it out. Hold up what you got and tell everybody what you got there. Coins. Coins. Aria, would you like to read a scripture? No? Okay. You see, it wasn't all good with Jesus. The crowds loved him. But the rulers of the temple, they were called Pharisees. They didn't like Jesus too much because they were running the show. And they were afraid that they had something good going. And they were afraid that Jesus was going to mess things up on them. And so they decided, we got to get rid of this guy. We can't have this guy running around. He's, he's wrecking things. And people are going to start going after him and saying that he's the king. And pretty soon Caesar is going to come and he's going to take away our country. He's going to, he's going to bring an army against us. And so... They, they started looking around to see how they could get rid of Jesus. And one of Jesus' 12 disciples, how you doing, sweetie? Good. One of Jesus' 12 disciples, a man by the name of Judas, you see, he got his feelings hurt. And so he decided he was going to sell Jesus out to the Pharisees, to the priests. And they said, he went to them and he said, what would you give me if I could turn Jesus over to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they said, we will give you 30 pieces of silver. That's what they, that's what they used for money back then. We will give you 30 pieces of silver. And so they gave him the silver. And from that time on, Judas began to find a way that he could arrange to have Jesus turned over to the Pharisees and to the priests. And it says here, Matt, those of you who have your Bibles, go over to Matthew 26, chapter 26. Matthew is right near that point. Here's Matthew. 
And so here's your chapter, your book, your chapter, your verse. So you're in chapter 8. So let's go over to chapter 26. Your big number here tells you what chapter you're in. Okay. So go ahead and just flip your pages until you see a big number 26. And I'm going to get you set up here for your points. Because Favor showed up. And Favor brought her Bible. She also brought an offering. Favor brought an offering. Favor is going to get a spin when we do our fabulous prizes. Oh, what about me? Did you bring your Bible? No. No? Did you... Okay, you're paying attention. You didn't bring a Bible. You didn't bring an offering. You gotta, gotta do any of the three things. Show up, bring your Bible, bring a friend, participate, have an offering. Do th any of those three. I get an offering. Then you get a spin. Okay. Did you find a favor? Okay. Now, in the little numbers under 20, under 26, look for a little number 14. So, chapter 26, verse 14. So you go down the little numbers in your chapters. And look for number 14. Now, let's see. Does anybody, would anybody like to read it? I have it here on the paper, so would anybody like to read it? Anybody who's not already participating? Anybody? Would you like to read that? Okay, you can just read it off that paper, okay? Nice and loud. Judas betrays Jesus. Start from right down there. Iscariot. Priests. What will? Good. Good. Sought. Good. Excellent. Did, did everybody catch that? Yeah. What will you give me? What will you give me? And they said 30 pieces of silver. <laughs> and so he started looking for an opportunity. Now, it was a time called the Passover that all the Jewish people celebrated. And Jesus, being Jewish himself, also was going to celebrate the Passover. Bless you. Bless you. So that brings us to the third egg, number three. And Reagan, you put your hand up. Why don't you come on up and open it up and tell us what's in it. A cup. Would you like to read a scripture? Yes? No. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Jordan. Read it real loud. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Now, part of the Passover was that they would all, they would break bread, and they would drink a cup of, hmm? Yeah. Would you like me to? No, don't read the Bible like that. And they would, <coughs> they would break bread together, and they would drink a cup together. And Jesus, when he was breaking bread, he told them, he said, this bread is my body broken for you. They had no idea what he was talking about. And then he passed around the cup and he said, this cup, it was a cup of wine. He said, this cup is my blood. Ew, gross, that's disgusting. And that's what the, it was wine, but that's what they thought though. They thought that, man, that's gotta be disgusting. We're not drinking anybody's blood, no way. But they did anyway. You see, what they didn't realize is that Jesus was telling them that he was about to die. And it was not just going to be an ordinary death because his death would bring salvation to all of us. And so after the Passover dinner, Jesus went out to pray and he went to this garden that he liked to go to. Let's get down. He went to this garden that he liked to go to. And Kelly, come on up. I saw your hand. Uh, you wanted to open the last egg. I'm going to let you open this one. That's your option. You don't have to have the mask on if you don't want it. Go ahead and tell us real loud what's in it. Show everybody. A hand of prayer. Right. Go turn around and show the class. Praying hands. Thank you. 
So we got praying hands here. Because Jesus went to the garden to pray. He knew what was going to happen. And it bothered him. He didn't know if he had the strength to go through it. And he said, Father, well, I'll tell you what. Kelly, would you like to read? Can I read? How long? It's just about uh, five verses. Oh, verses? Okay. Here, I'll give it to you, and you can tell me if you'd like to read it. Just. Oh, I want to read it. Let's see. There we go. Just what's above the line here in the dark print, if you want to. This here? Yeah, just this here. You okay with that, or do you want me to just go ahead? All right. You want to, you want to read it? I'll let you read. Here, I'll read it real loud. Okay. Just just the bold print. Just what's above the line. And they went to they went to a place called uh, Gethsemane. Gethsemane, and he said to his sit here. I'm going to go pray. He said, Father, if we could possibly not do this, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Now, I, I'm going to have to really move along here. So, Number five, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to start opening these up. Number five, we have a leather strap. You see, it was a custom that the Romans would, if you got trouble, let's say you went to the principal's office, and they said, what did you do? And you didn't do anything wrong. And they said, we don't believe you. So here's how we're going to figure out what you did wrong. We're going to whip you, and you're going to be in so much pain, you're going to confess what you did. And that's what they did to Jesus. And there was a law saying that they could give him up to 39 Stripes that they could hit him 39 times to whip. And it wasn't just a whip, it was, I'm not going to go into details because you guys are young, but it was a very, it was a bloody, very painful, painful, awful thing. Listen, listen up. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him and just whipped him. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. And they came up to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And struck him with their hands. And Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I'm bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. I can't find anything wrong with him, but we're going to punish him anyway. Yeah. All right, so that was number five. And it, it mentioned a crown of thorns. Has anybody ever gotten into maybe a mesquite tree? Yes. Yeah, and Nasty it hurt thorns, it. right? It hurts. How would you like somebody to take a branch of that and shove it down on your head? It's That's what they did to Jesus. Now, I I grew up I grew up back east. I grew up in I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I grew up in New York, and when they say thorns, I thought of the little uh, bush. That's coming. We're, we're, com we're coming to that. Now, when I, you ever see a thorns on a rose bush? Yeah. They're these little things, and that's what I thought about thorns. But then I moved out here to Arizona, and they got some nasty thorns out here. And let me tell you that the weather in, in Israel where Jesus lived is a lot like here. 
and they got some nasty thorns there too and they took a thing of thorns and they just shoved it down on his head and the thorns uh, cut him. Me out. It, and it should. It should gross every one of us out. It's, it's a horrible, horrible thing. But Jesus did all that for us. He was willing to go through this for us. He knew it was coming. And He still did it for us. So they said, twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on His head and put a reed in His right hand and kneeling before Him. Not only did they put it on Him, they started making fun of Him. Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! Oh, look, here's the King of the Jews! Let's put a crown on His head! Hail, King of the Jews! They were very mean to Him. They spit on Him. They slapped him. They punched him. They pulled hair out of his beard. You ever get your hair pulled? Yeah. You ever get your hair pulled? That hurts, doesn't it? That hurts. Now, girls, you're never going to have to ever worry about this. But when we guys get a beard, now you boys aren't old enough for this, but you will be. When we guys get a beard, and maybe you're holding a baby, and the baby grabs onto your beard, starts pulling it, ooh. Okay, it hurts when you get your hair pulled. It hurts even more when you get your beard pulled. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Trust me on that one. Trust me on that one. By this time, Jesus was a bloody mess. Listen, guys. By this time, Jesus was a bloody mess. But it wasn't enough. They decided that now it's time to nail him. This is a nail. That's the worst part. And it says they put the nail right into his wrists. Right through his wrists. And they put the nail through his feet. They put his feet together like this and they put one big spike right through his feet. And they put him up on a cross. Let me tell you something. that I have never had that happen to me and I pray I never will. But they, people who know better than I do say it was probably the most painful punishment you could ever have because Jesus knew all this was coming and he still went because he found it important that we have access to God they delivered him over to be crucified and they, he had to carry his own cross to the hill up the hill and they put him on the cross And while he was hanging on the cross, they took off all of his clothes except a little cloth covering him here. And they, the soldiers, took his clothes. They split his clothes up between them. There was this one piece of clothing that was nice and they all wanted it. And so they said, let's, let's gamble over it. We're going to have a contest. Who, who could roll the highest number? And the person that rolled the highest number gets the clothing. So while Jesus is hanging on the cross, they're gambling for his clothing. <clears throat> because the Bible said it, that would happen. His own mother was standing there watching all this happen. Yeah. After three hours on that cross, Jesus died. They wanted to make sure. So they took a spear and they jammed it in his side just to make sure he was dead. See, if somebody jammed, if somebody jammed a spear into your side, it would hurt, wouldn't it? And you'd react. Didn't it go like up to here? They, they say it did. They say it went up into his heart. But they, they pulled it, put it right into his side and it probably went up into his heart. They said the blood and water came out and because of what came out of his body, they knew he was dead. There was an earthquake. There was darkness. They say that God turned his head. He couldn't bear to watch. And some friends of Jesus asked for his body after he was dead. And they took his body down and they wrapped it in cloth the way they used to bury people back then. And they borrowed a grave. Jesus didn't even have his own grave. They borrowed a grave and put his body into a borrowed grave. 
I gotta, I gotta keep going here because it's time. Your parents gonna be here very soon. I'm, we ran out of time. Now, the, the Roman, uh, the priests were afraid that the disciples were going to come in and steal his body. And so they said, let's roll a big stone. Now this is a tiny stone, but the big stone is probably about this big. They said, roll it over in front of the tomb so that they can't steal his body. Put a Roman guard there so they can't come and steal the body. And so the, the governor said, yeah, you can do that. We'll let you do that. And then... Sunday came, the first day of the week. And one of Jesus' friends, the Sabbath was over, and one of Jesus' friends went to the tomb to prepare his body. When she got there, the stone had been rolled away. Anaya, come here. Open this egg, turn around, open this egg, and tell everybody what's in it. Nothing. And that's exactly what was in the tomb. Mm -hmm. When she looked into the grave, there was nothing there. But wait a minute. Three days ago, they just put a body there. Bodies don't get up and walk away, do they? No. Jesus' body does. But when God enters the picture, bodies get up and walk. Jesus, here's the problem. Here's the problem. No problem at all. Here's what happened. God raised Jesus from the dead. He is no longer in the tomb. His tomb, his grave, is as empty as this eggshell. Jesus rose from the dead. And because Jesus rose from the dead, that means he's still alive. And his sacrifice for our sins is a sure sacrifice. And now she is. Guys, God loves you very much, every one of you. It doesn't matter whether we're good or bad. And I, I'm going to look around, and I, I look around, and I see everybody in this room, including the grown-ups. Every one of us has been good, and every one of us has been bad. And God loves us all the same. It doesn't matter. He loved you so much that he let his own son die for you so that you don't have to pay the penalty for sin. Think about that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you because you did give your life for us freely, willingly. And I pray, Lord, that you would cause us to always remember that sacrifice, that we would live to please you in everything that we say and everything that we do. And now as we go to our own homes today, I pray that you would go with us and that you would bless us and that you would keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.